Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verses 5 through 26. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, what are you thirsty for? In the morning, I like to start out with a cold glass of tangy orange juice and then move on to a few cups of hot coffee. Maybe you like a glass of sweet apple juice or a double espresso latte caramel macchiato white mocha chocolate thingy. Your thirst probably depends on the situation or circumstances. You might be thirsty for a calming cup of tea or a cool glass of smooth chocolate milk. Then again, you might be thirsting for a bottle of sugary carbonated pop or the extra pop of an energy drink to get you going. No matter what we are thirsty for or what the situation is, we all have need for living water. Today, Jesus seeks us at the well and comes to us as living water, as the Messiah, the Christ. In the Gospel reading, according to St. John, we have the account of Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at the well. We begin with Jesus traveling from Judea in the south to Galilee in the north, taking the most direct route through Samaria, a very non-Jewish thing to do. The Jews and the Samaritans did not get along due to their differences. The Samaritans had intermarried with non-Jews. They only accepted the five books of Moses, and they didn't worship in Jerusalem. The Samaritans were seen by the Jews as being outsiders of God's covenant people, the people of the promise. We see Jesus as man, wearied from his journey, sitting beside the well. A woman of Samaria comes along to get water from the well, and Jesus does another non-Jewish thing. Jesus speaks to the Samaritan woman requesting a drink. The woman responds, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? The Samaritan woman knows Jesus only as a Jew. Jesus replies, If you knew the gift of God and who it is is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman doesn't know or thirst for Jesus, but she does know the history of the people of Israel. She knows this is a deep well, and it was given by the great patriarch Jacob. Jacob, who wrestled with God. Jacob, whose name is changed to Israel. Jacob, who has 12 sons, which become the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel. Jesus responds, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
as it happens often in Scripture. The Lord's words and meaning are not understood. Jesus seems to be talking past his listener. They seem to be disconnected in their communication, talking and thinking about two different topics, physical thirst versus spiritual thirst. Jesus is speaking about himself as he is spiritual living water. He is eternal life. If you thirst for righteousness with God, if you, in despair, understand the need for and desire forgiveness of sins, if you are repentant of living a sin-filled, self-centered, prideful life, Jesus gives us himself. Living water, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. But the woman's response shows a different thought and understanding, a physical thirst. Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Why was the woman at the well at that time? Why was she the only one there? Was her thirst any different from the others? Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband. And come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. Ouch. Jesus speaks the painful truth to the woman. Jesus hits her sin with God's law. She has had five husbands and is not married to the man she now has. Adultery. Maybe that answers the question about her trip to the well. We can all imagine what she is thirsty for, and it isn't water. Five husbands and not married to the current guy? What an awful woman. What an outcast. It is no wonder she's at the well by herself. Who would want to be around someone like that? To talk with someone with a reputation and lifestyle like that. I'm glad we're not like her. Oh, wait a minute. We may not have committed the identical sins as the woman at the well, but you and I are in the same sinful condition and need as she is. We might pretend that we aren't as bad as this woman, but remember who is calling her out on her sins. This is Christ Jesus the Lord who is all-knowing and always present. He knows all your sinful thoughts. Your selfish desires, your evil thirsts. Just like the woman at the well, God Almighty knows what you and I sinfully thirst for, eagerly, daily, and nightly, whether we're alone or with others. 
we cannot hide our thirst for sin from God. You and I are no different than the Samaritan woman. Our trip to the well of sin, our thirsts are like hers. Do you and I Understand who is seeking us out at the well and what he is offering to give us. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. After Jesus calls her out on her sin, on her thirst, the woman has moved on in her understanding of Jesus. She now knows that he is more than a Jewish man. He is a prophet of God, a spokesman for God who speaks what God says. The woman goes on to talk about the differences between the Jews and the Samaritans and where they worship. Is this a ploy to change the subject from her sins? Or does she have an honest desire to know what Jesus has to say about places to worship? Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Jesus takes the woman and us to right worship, true worship. Jesus is from the Jews. Jesus is salvation. God the Father is spirit. True worship is worship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in truth and spirit. True worship and praise is through the Lord as he seeks us as he comes to us, as he loves and forgives and blesses repentant sinners. The Lord quenches our thirst as we repentant sinners thirst for his righteousness in true worship through the means of grace, his holy word and the sacraments of holy baptism and holy communion. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. The woman knew of the Messiah, the promised one to come. Now she knows the Messiah through Jesus' revelation to her, through his word. What a transition for her. She goes from knowing the man, Jesus, is a Jew, to knowing that he is a prophet of God, to knowing of the Messiah, to knowing the Messiah, the Christ Jesus. All of this is done through the power of God for her, for you, and for me. Through his word. Through the word we hear that Jesus seeks us out as we sinners go to the well looking to quench our thirsts. Jesus, the Christ, gives us forgiveness and eternal life through his life, death, and resurrection. Do you remember 
how this thirsty woman at the well responds to God's word, his law, and his gospel. In the verses that follow today's reading, she goes and tells others, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? She shares the word. The others hear Jesus. And many more believed because of his word. You and I have been given living water. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and life eternal. Let us be like the thirsty woman from Samaria and share the good news of Jesus with the thirsty world. So what does this mean for us in our thirst? No matter what the situation or circumstance is, whether we thirst for sin in pride and arrogance and need to hear God's law, or if we thirst for righteousness with God in repentant despair and need to hear God's gospel. Jesus has sought us out and comes to us. Jesus has met us at the well and comes for us. Jesus knows us and our thirst. Jesus gives us the gift of forgiveness and eternal life through his blood, which was shed on the cross for all, flowing for all mankind. Jesus is the gift of God. Jesus gives himself for us so that we will never be thirsty forever. Jesus is the Messiah, the living water, our Savior from our thirst for sin, our provider for our thirst for righteousness with God. And He is the truth and true worship of the Father. To Him be the glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, the living water. Amen.